The boys from Tuscaloosa have flown into town, greeted by a fresh blanket of snow and a home team that is generating more and more consistency game by game. The Illinois Fighting Illini host the Alabama Crimson Tide as part of game three of this six game homestand to round out the regular season for the home team. Good evening everyone for the Big Pond in Champaign, Illinois and streaming live on the Illini Hockey Network. On the call, I'm George Corey. And a lot has changed since these two teams last took the ice together four months ago at the Pelham Center. For Alabama in that time, a few coaching changes, a current 10 game losing skid, and a deja vu of close but no cigar over and over again in a lot of those contests. And last time out two weeks ago against future SEC opponent Oklahoma, well that was no exception. Losing both games by one goal and blowing a three goal lead on Saturday in a Toronto Maple Leafs-esque collapse. And in both games, too many large mistakes combined with the problems that had been hurting them all year. Too much time in the D zone, penalty kill problems, and neutral zone and O zone dead ends. They're still defined by their hard hitting, physical ways along the boards. But the challenges over their last couple of games and really this season at large have brought increased frustration as they try and impose that physical will. But Alabama's not the only team looking to stop the bleeding. Sneakily, a five game losing streak has crept up on this home Illinois squad. Last weekend against Iowa State, as well as they did play, they just ran into a fast and defensive buzzsaw in that Cyclone crew. And in particular, Illinois' ability to create chaos in front, sort of those signature scrums and rebounds and getting four or five bodies right in front of the net in the crease, that was shut off last week. So they'll look to return back to what has slowly become one of their top strengths on the season. And the Illini did manage, however, to fulfill some of the litmus tests that we have not seen them succeed in on Fridays before. In particular, the speed and the physicality. Remember, physicality back and forth is going to be a big part of tonight's contest. But the one that got away from them last Friday in terms of those litmus tests, the puck handling and playing a clean game. And we bring that up because that's going to be tantamount tonight against an Alabama team which has suffered from long amounts of time in their own D zone. Again, combine that with a team in Illinois that has really upped the ante physically this season and you have two very interesting battles that could define this game tonight. The physicality on both sides and the puck clearing. How long can Illinois keep Alabama in their own defensive zone and frustrate them as opponents have done to the tide for most of the year? We will find out. Let's send you down to the ice for public address announcer Nick Miner. Starting lineups and the national anthem brought to you by Skender, the general contractors behind the premier construction experience. Visit skender.com to learn more. Let's drop the puck, shall we?
Starting lineups again brought to you by Skender, the general contractors behind the premier construction experience. Visit Skender.com to learn more. For Alabama, the shifting of the top line continues. This time on the line in defense with Austin Fink, Parks Wallace, the Nashville native. Again, there's been a lot of shifting back and forth over who Fink's line mate would be. It had been Ryan Matustic over some time as well. Wallace back in over Matustic for this series, at least for today. Top line in their regular spot in the forward slot for Alabama of Simmons, Bilodeau, and Sextro. Again, some more shifting there as well as Sextro recently got the jump over Jensen Lopez at right wing. And for Illinois, plenty of players back from injury today. Nick Anderson, Matthew McDonald, and Patrick McDonald. So some more line shifting on defense, this time on a line. Kuzabetkov and Atticus Helper. The defensive line changes continue for Illinois over the last few days. Check that over the last few games as we are underway. Running after that one, Helfer. Sextro on a six, sends that to the near side half wall. Billado meets a man right there. Flung back into the Illinois trapezoid. Now David Ettingen running after that one. He will clear it before he gets hit into the wall. The first of many hits we will see tonight from an Alabama team for whom physicality is their top trend as play stopped. Face off one by Bogdanov, pulled out towards the corner. Illinois having trouble clearing the puck right there. Still fighting for it over there. And right away, looks like a penalty might be coming, and it is. The call is an elbow. So you start to see Alabama's physicality in action right away. Into the box for Illinois, however, it's David Ettingen. And a very interesting sequence right there. As the talk for Alabama over the last four or five games, ever since Michael Fairbanks and Ian Abert have taken over this program, has been you want to play physical, but when the opponent fights back, you want to avoid a lot of the meaningless retribution penalties that have hurt you. So right there, the opponent fought back, and Alabama was able to keep themselves at bay, and it got them a two-minute power play. Far side looking to move in, fires one, full body block in the right place at the right time there was Luke Alpe. And now able to clear it, Alexander Matvey for Illinois. Again in the box for the Illini, David Ettingen, the call is an elbow. Alabama in their own trapezoid now. Looks to get a play set. Two men to the left, feeds it to one of them. Moving in now, that's Chris Molipaw, and back to the point. Going around one man and firing, deflected and to the near side half wall. That one off the stick of Calvin Mansfield as Illinois able to clear. 
40 seconds having gone by on this power play. Dangerous territory there, but a man able to corral it for the tie. Alabama a bit deliberate thus far in this early game to clear it from their own D zone. Again, they want to get set here on the power play, particularly because they've been very frustrated in the neutral zone with teams forcing them to the outside. A lot of one on threes, particular in the Oklahoma series last time out. Simmons helps his line mate out, able to salvage that possession. That one goes through Missouri, but why? Alabama still able to control. That's Jensen Lopez now. Moving to his left, feeds it across. Back to Wallace. Wallace again getting the start alongside Austin Fink. Look for the touch pass there from Billado. Couldn't get one, and that will clear all the way. 30 seconds left on the minor penalty. Two minutes into this game. Trying to navigate that through traffic is Fink. And now Simmons will have to do the same. Feeds that across to Wallace. Gains the zone, but forced to his right. Helfer harassing Wallace with a couple of body checks, now able to take the puck away from him. Has some help from Zuzhebekov as the latter looks to clear. Still holding onto it, now he does send it back to neutralize. And that will do it, David Ettingen out of the box. An early penalty killed for Illinois. Line changes for both teams as that one is fed into the Illinois zone. Helfer running after that with Fink on his six. Trying to take that one away right there at the far side point is Nate Byron. 50-50 puck battle in front of the Illinois bench. Very pesky with the stick right there. Nearly to success was Jake Harrison. Illinois still able to send it through. Falling down, trying to run through that is Sasha Matviv. 50-50 puck battle as the puck manages to carry him close to the crease. Now Illinois looking to control. Turning that one around, Alex Huntley. Sent back, Zuzhebetkov. Now across for Joe Dorian. Dorian playing the ricochet game, trying to find a man in the near side corner. Abbreviated line change for Illinois as that puck battle ensues. It's brought back out to the point. They're able to hold on to it while still making a line change. Very impressive. As it now goes into the trapezoid, a gray sweater corrals it. Joe Dorian back to the near side, has a lane and fires, and a save made by Joseph Hughes. His first test passed three minutes and change into the game. Certainly a weekend he's going to want to forget last time out in the aforementioned Sooner series. A pivotal mistake that ended up being the difference Friday night and then giving up three goals late in the third period Saturday. That ended up being the difference. As an Illinois shot there is turned aside. Trying to keep it in there was Alpi, but the Illini have to tag up. Near side with a burst of speed now. Trying to move around there is Louis DeCola. Has it taken away from him before he sends a man into the boards, but Illinois able to clear. Andrew McLean's turn to chase after that one. A man beats him to it, trying to turn that around is Max Eckstein. Eckstein running after it now, trying to gain possession of it, and he does. Tried to send one in, and that one goes wide from Kramer. Running after that one now, Decola right there. Kramer trying to turn around, harassed by Harrison Slogan. A man gets chubbed into the boards right there. Back at the half wall on the near side, Illinois looking to clear. Very quick game from both teams and a very physical game thus far. Not surprised to see either one. Nick Anderson in his first ice time in a little while, coming off injury, sends it into the neutral zone, but Alabama chasing it back into their own O zone. Shot fired, manages to get into the crease. David Ettingen has to turn that one around, but taken away now by Molopaw. Waiting patiently, looking for an outlet. Sends it to the corner. Beautiful passing up for Fink. Tried for the touch pass there. He got too fancy and it cost him. Now moving that through traffic, Parks Wallace gains the zone, gets around one man. He's harassed from behind by Alex Huntley before that shot is sent too high. Mansfield with it in the right place at the right time there is Nick Anderson to deny that shot. Illinois looking for a clear at the point. Alabama lays the boom, but they are able to clear it. Line change for Illinois, five minutes and 15 seconds into the game. Trying to move quickly on the near side, Evan Brown, he's met by a gray sweater. Another one there in Missouri will be active with the stick in the trapezoid and that gives Illinois the possession. Aslan Zuzhebetkov again getting the start for the second game in a row, this time alongside Atticus Helfer. Had it, fed it all the way to the far side. Running after that one are Simmons and Matviv and Simmons wins that battle. Matt Vive, harassed from behind by Simmons, lays the forecheck there. Matt Vive still has it, looking to clear. Now Justin Heiler trying to apply some pressure, but gets it off to Helfer. 
Both teams trading blows in their own defensive zone and getting it really into the other team's zone, but nothing much that can happen from there. Now it will be Illinois' turn to reset. A lot of resets due to that fact. Now six minutes into the game. Running after that one, Benjamin Wilcoxon. Trying to take that away there is Aiden Taylor. And Alabama able to clear Illinois now. Their turn to reset off of a tied line change. Pass too hot for Taylor to handle. Fed back around, now Joe Dorian. And back to Taylor as he gains the zone. Illinois had something there, but Taylor will reset now in his own trapezoid. Tried to find a man, he found it right to a red sweater. That's Byron, able to clear. Pass too hot for a man to handle. Joe Dorian turns around now, chips it in, and doesn't bother to chase. Coming up on four minutes here of whistleless hockey. Going around one man there is Byron. He gets taken down by McDonough before he can go around another. Missouri active with the stick, flings that to the near side. Helfer trying to clear, he's harassed. And now Bogdanoff running after it off of that pass, but two on one and Alabama will win that battle. Now play stopped, eight minutes into the game. Again, we talked about it for Illinois, how one of their litmus tests on the season has been the speed and the ability to be the faster team just to even against a team like Iowa State where you almost ran into a buzzsaw. They still played faster than they had comparatively in the past. And so that was a great sight. But for two teams who really want to focus on physical play here, you don't expect that and the speed to really combine particularly on the boards. You would expect it to combine in the open ice, looking for open ice hits, but a lot of the hits have been on the boards. Right there, a little open ice tussle, and that will draw a penalty on Alabama. A trip the call. And that might not be the only call. Into the box right there, Ryan Matustic for the trip. And will another man join him? Yes, he will. Louis DeCola drew the ire of the linesman after that penalty. And so not exactly a retribution penalty that you're trying to avoid from Alabama, more of a frustration penalty that time. Yet despite the fact that two men go into the box, and there are two minor penalties on the board. Alabama still skates out four, so it will be a five on four power play here before the linesmen converge. Let's see, will a red sweater have to be drawn off the ice here because there are two players in the box? And at least for right now, the answer to that question is no. So five on four, power play here for Illinois. Set to take the face off, Kramer and Bogdanov. Again, for this Alabama team, a lot of weaknesses on the season have been the time of possession and the puck clearing. A lot of long periods of time spent in their own D zone throughout this season. So now's a golden opportunity to make them frustrated here if you're Illinois. Combine that with the fact that they have only been 8 for 12 on the penalty kill since the start of the new year. Sub 70%. And they've struggled in the new year on the penalty kill. So two weaknesses of the tide might give Illinois their first goal. Looking for a some contact there. That one's still alive off the shot of Anderson. Now Dorian flings a man into the boards. Huge hit there. It will give Illinois the possession again. Helfer sends that far side. Going in, Matt Vive deflected wide. Chase down for it now between Anderson and Wallace. And Anderson comes up with it again before it's clear. Again, if you're Alabama, how can you clear the puck? How can you simply put get it out of your D zone? Matt Vive rolling all the way around to the far side. Back to Anderson. Back to Matt Vive who takes his place at the point. Now fed over to Atticus Helfer. Helfer going in. Shot wide, deflected, still alive, and taken by Illinois. Helfer trying to go in, does again. A lot of deflections and just to the right of Hughes. 
Inside of a minute now on the power play for Illinois. Helfer sends that one to the far side. Going around a man, Anderson goes around another. Full body block right there. And a beauty from Evan Brown to deny a chance from the high slot. Alabama with their second clear on the penalty kill. Some advancements certainly. Two good sights to see for this Tide program that again has struggled getting the puck out of their own D zone. Circling around Anderson. Illinois with three men to the far side. Make that four. Firing in off the pad of Hughes. Now running after that one, Zuzhebetkov at the near side half wall. And now Nathan Dash. Zuzhebetkov trying to go in, sends that far side. Illinois being very patient with it. Now Dash at the point. Back to Zuzhebetkov. Thought about swinging it. Right inside. A shot. Save made as he came out of the blue paint. Back to five on five, Zuzhebetkov misplays that on the near side. Still fighting for it right there in front. And a 50-50 puck battle in the corner that will kill more time. And the trapezoid, trying to feed it to a man, he does. Illinois controls, but Dash has to circle back. A few more deflections and a save made. So Alabama escapes a little bit there on the penalty kill for one, but you know they had some great improvements on their own time of some full body blocks and some quick clears. They'll have to do the same thing again over here as that one sent all the way around. Dorian unable to handle that one and now a chase down for it on the other side. Alpi feeds it around. Dorian alongside Andrew McLean. And now running after that one, Patrick McDonough. Man beats him to it. That's Mundy. Sent back towards the crease, turned aside. Illinois trying to rush after it, but the tide will clear it. Now two on two here. Moving on the far side, Louis DeCola. Trying to go around a man. Still has it in the trapezoid. Fanned on a shot right there. That was Simmons. And that's one he's gonna wanna have back. Unable to handle that one right there is Matustic. And that will draw a whistle. and a half minutes into this first period. Illinois with a lot of good chances in on Joseph Hughes on a power play. And now a face off on the near side. Atticus Helfer chases after that one, now on his own trapezoid, applying a four check, Jacob Harrison. Helfer going back and forth with him before he sends it to the near side. Illinois clears, fight for it in the point in the Alabama zone. Colliding right there, trying to make something happen. McDonald, Anthony Verasi right there as well for Illinois. Pulled out by McDonald, and then he has it pickpocketed by a red sweater. Now Zuzhebetkov with Helfer right there. And dangerous territory here for Illinois. One-on-one -on -one in the corner, but Helfer able to get it out. Zuzhebetkov deliberate in clearing that, gets it to Matt Vive, and now he turns on the Jets. One-on-two, can Matt Vive go around one? Instead, he feeds it up and Alabama controls in their own D zone. They look to clear, they get it back to neutral ice. Now Nate Byron gains, has a man to his left, fires, save made, deflected, but why? And it's Joy trying to clear that now for Illinois. 50-50 puck battle at the far side half wall. Joy comes out with it, feeds it to his left. Now Nick Anderson gains, tries to go around, fires one just too high there. And Alabama able to clear. Illinois trying to make quick work here in the neutral zone. And a turnover there from Emmett Joy. Can Alabama take advantage? Bogdanoff right there to deny that before he flings that one in and gets hit right in front of the Alabama bench by Jensen Lopez. Another huge hit on the near side, and here we go. That was Alex Lesky who made a huge hit on Austin Fink. They're still going after it. Bailey McCarthy in the middle of it there for Illinois. Joe Dorian has his helmet off. 
It has to be restrained by the linesman. Alabama fans, this is very familiar. It was Bailey McCarthy who applied a hit in retribution on the near side. And the linesman will talk this over. Again, the physicality has been a strength of this Alabama team. They've always been hard hitting, especially on the boards. And you saw it right there, right in front of their own bench, just 10 seconds of game time ago. But that has produced many skirmishes and really more so than normal as just now making his way to the bench from that spot is Max Eckstein. And Really for Michael Fairbanks, especially alongside with co-head coach Ian Haybert, since taking over, they've really tried to move away from the fight prone aspect of it. Not the physicality side of it, but the side of it where the opponents will try to punch back because in that time, Alabama has drawn a lot of penalties. They've committed a lot of penalties in those sort of retribution hits. And they've tried to move away from the fight prone aspect of it. Play your own game in the words of Fairbanks, but with more discipline when opponents try and punch back. So this is really the first sort of instance of that where, check that, it's the second instance of that. I take that back. The first one was about 30 seconds into the game when there was a hit applied on Illinois and then the Illini's David Ettingen applied a retaliatory hit and Alabama just stood back not trying to draw any further penalties, knowing they had just gone on the power play. Now, conversely, a hit in front of the Alabama bench. Illinois retaliates in the Alabama zone in the near side corner, and then back and forth off of a few hits, Alabama gets involved. So as much as it is a part of this game, it's still something that the Tide are trying to eliminate as a means of perhaps lessening the weakness of the penalty kill that they have had on the season and as of late in particular. But the danger to that is you can't let the avoiding of the retribution and penalties take away from the overall physical nature. You can't throw out the baby with the bathwater and destroy the team's identity in the process. And at least from today, from the two hits, the two instances of that thus far, again, a small sample size, but the Tide have been able to do that thus far in this game. We will see if they can keep that up as the linesman discussing things over, a free timeout for both teams. A five minute major was just announced, has been assessed to Bailey McCarthy for the hit in retaliation on the boards on the near side corner. Yet to see if that will correspond for any penalty time for the Tide. It appears it will not. So a five minute power play in this scoreless game for Alabama. Not very much they were able to do on their first power play with Illinois being able to clear some pucks and at the very least slow them down as they try and gain the zone. But they will again have five minutes now to get something set up for a goal. It would be the first goal of this game. Set to take the face off. The top line is in there for the Tide. Simmons leading the way, but the face off won by Bogdanoff. Matt Vive right there, but for Illinois, harassed by Bilodeau. Three on three, 50-50 puck battle. Pulled out to Simmons in the trapezoid. He looks to get reset as he has a man right on his six. That's Zuzhebetkov. Fink feeding it back around at the near side point. Simmons right there along with Jensen Lopez. Still being fought for at the half wall. Back out to the point. Illinois trying to keep them to the periphery right here. Particularly Aiden Taylor right there was trying to keep guys all the way towards the point and to the boards. Trying to turn that around right there. Kept alive by Fink but the offside call. That was a close one. And 34 seconds into this five minute major for Alabama, we will have a neutral zone face off. Again, Max Sestro over the last 
couple of weeks was put in for Jensen Lopez on the top line. So for those first 34 seconds and change, they were both on the ice together. Interesting to see how that dynamic would have worked for the tie. Quick pass to the far side. Mansfield moving right, goes around a few men, can't go around more. Still able to corral it at the point. Back to the half wall now. Playing catch with Molopaw. Now looking to go in, denied by Matt Vive. Alabama with a lot of rotation to keep the puck alive, although Illinois has done a good job denying them the ability to go in. Now trying to hold on to that one and unable to go in there, Evan Brown right on cue. Back to the point. Now to the far side corner, playing catch, looking for a feed in, Mansfield, full body block, still alive in the slot and cleared by Illinois. That was Alexander Matt Vive. Three minutes, 30 seconds left on the penalty. And six and a half left in period number one. With a burst of speed right there is Lopez. Top line back out for the Tide. Illinois able to take it away right there and clear it. Now Parks Wallace with one man to either side of him. And a man behind him as he gains his own, tries to go around two, but Illinois takes it away. Illinois doing a good job denying them as they get into the neutral zone and in some cases gain the offensive zone. They haven't allowed the tie to get set really since that opening faceoff. Alabama looking to change that now. Wallace trying to go around Luke Alpi. Alpi forcing him to the boards and down, but a red sweater right there to pick it up. Billado sent across. Now that's Lopez who Alpi's trying to provide the same fate. Lopez back with it, Alabama bunched on the far side. Trying to go in, Lopez denied by Alpi. Beautiful play here by Alpi, both with the stick and with the physicality here to tick time off of this clock. He goes down off a hit from Lopez, trying for a centering pass. Great placement right there by Anthony Verassi. He's looking to cash in for more. Verassi right there, but a man beats him to it and play stop. That might draw a tripping penalty on Verassi. Rossi first with a beautiful play right in front to an eye a shot from the slot. Then he grabs it, but Chandler Bilodeau outruns him. And hold on. The call appears to be on Alabama instead. Bilodeau was able to go around Verashi. but he was the one who went down along with Verasi, and the trip will be assessed to Bilodeau. So with five minutes left here in this first period, that will essentially wipe out any of the remaining power play for Alabama. Four on four for the next two minutes as the Tide win that face off and send it to the near side. A man looks to clear it, Illinois applying the four check right there, sent to the half wall, two on one here, pulled away by Bogdanov, goes around one man, has a lane and fires too high running after it now to try and keep the possession alive. Playing the ricochet game there. A few men converge on it. Trying to keep it in there is Zuzhebetkov off the pass and does. Far side now, Zuzhebetkov calling back for it at the center point. Goes around one man, has a lane, but deflected off the stick there, right off the bat. Alabama looks to clear, still in the Illinois zone before it's briefly poked into neutral ice. Now Aslan Zuzhebetkov goes around one man, goes around another, goes around a third, and gains the zone. One on three here, can he go around a fourth? He can, but odd angle. Still manages to get it on goal and turned aside. Four minutes, 10 seconds left in period number one. Again, four on four hockey for the next minute 15. Atticus Helfer trying to pick that one off right there, but able to get it out is Parker King. He has it on the near side, flings it in. And now Illinois' turn to clear. Long pass from Anderson to Matt Vive, gains the zone here. Illinois tried to take advantage of an Alabama line change. Can Matt Vive still do it? Look for a centering pass, sent all the way around to the point. Good defense there by the Tide to deny him from going in. Dash now harassed from behind. Nathan Dash trying to make something happen. Anthony Verassi trying to pick it up from where he left off. Verassi able to hold on to it despite being harassed from behind. Sends it back to Nick Anderson. 35 seconds left to four on fours. Anderson fires one off the pad of Hughes. Matt Vive able to keep it in, no one in the immediate vicinity. He tries to hold on to it, but falls down in the process there. And Alabama will gain the puck. 
Moving in Wallace and taken away. He had an Illinois player on either side of him. Now trying to take that away off the pass from Matt V, but a one on three, still right there. And now a rush for it, see if Illinois can keep it in. Poked away now, and Alabama will get the best of that. That was Wallace. Back to five on five now, as out of the box comes Bailey McCarthy for Illinois. Two minutes, 50 seconds left. Fresh off the line change, fires one wide. That was McCarthy right out of the box. Anderson and Helfer play catch. Helfer tries to feed one in right there. Unable to handle that, McCarthy again. To the near side now. This game has been very muddy at times. A lot of 50-50 puck battles that have ticked time off the clock. At the same time, it's also been a very fast game. We've had a little bit of both here through the first 17 and a half minutes of play in this scoreless battle. Winding up but unable to take that shot there is Zuzhebetkov as he's forced back towards the boards on the near side. Another 50-50 puck battle pulled out by Illinois in the corner. Trying to feed one in. Now looking for a centering pass. Goes through two men and now a chase down for it between Zuzhebetkov and a red sweater. Missouri out to handle that one. Trying to go in on angle off the stick of Michael Kramer. Alabama trying to keep it alive on the far side. Sent into the crease, but right there to handle that one is Zuzhebetkov. Turns it over, trying to keep it in as that one went right to a red sweater. That was Will Coxon who tried to keep it in, but now Illinois takes it away. McCarthy with a lot of great plays here in the early going, including probably the most notable one as a few men collide in the Alabama trapezoid. A minute 30 left here in this scoreless first period. Fresh off a line change, Aiden Taylor trying to enforce a four check alongside Patrick McDonough. Taylor harasses Fink from behind. Alpie right there to help delay that, but now Simmons gains the zone, sends one in, and quick reaction from Missouri on the glove save to his left. As now some friendly formalities between Aiden Taylor and Chandler Bilodeau. And again, the focus for Michael Fairbanks and this Alabama staff has been trying to avoid the retribution penalties when opponents punch back after you deliver a first hit. They've been trying to be very disciplined, but you can still get under people's skin the old-fashioned way and just pull a little Draymond Green and just trash talk the heck out of it. And so Bilodeau applying a little bit of that here on Taylor, who now has the puck. He has it taken away from him in the near side corner. Alabama looks to clear. Illinois able to keep it in, playing the ricochet game, and now running after that one, McDonough. 55 seconds left here in the first period. He feeds that one in and says a prayer. Andrew McLean unable to answer it for the time being. Joe Dorian back in neutral ice. Dorian feeds it in and gets hit in the process. Now Alabama will reset. That's Louis DeCola. McCarthy running after him, trying to take away the puck. Matt Vive there as well for Illinois. Alabama still able to hold onto it, but under man there is Decola. Dorian gets hit into the boards as he had near possession of that. Lopez might have gotten away with a cross check there for the Tide after the hit on Dorian. Inside of 30 seconds now as another man goes down at the near side point. Alabama able to clear, although that one too hot to handle for Evan Brown. 10 seconds now. Alabama needs to get it out here. Is trying to take that away. Matthew McDonald. Five seconds now. 50-50 puck battle pulled out by the Tide. Two seconds trying to get a shot off there, but denied by Nathan Dash. Kept to the outside right there was Chris Molopaw. So a very physical first period as right on cue. Some more exchanges between both teams. And again, for a team in Alabama that is trying to be more disciplined after opponents lay hits on them, you can certainly still trash talk and get under their skin that way. Very physical first period, a very fast first period at times as well, but at the same time it got slow too with a lot of 50-50 puck battles. A little bit of everything you could say and really the chances for both teams, only eight shots in this first period combined, most of the chances for both teams were in transition and on breakaways and on odd man rushes. So a good sight for Alabama and a team, again, that has struggled this whole season to really knock the puck out of their own D zone. And the time of possession battle was a bit more even. 
Now the focus goes to, can you keep that going, but can you also establish some pressure of your own, some sustained pressure in your offensive zone? 40 more minutes to go to see if that will be answered. First period is done here, scoreless on eight shots here in Champaign.
Welcome back for period number two. The first frame was scoreless, only eight shots combined, and a lot of possessions that were shut down in the neutral zone by both teams. For Alabama, you have managed to evade the troubles that have plagued much of your season. That being forced to keep it in your own defensive zone, forced into a lot of one-on-threes offensively. You've been all right on the penalty kill tonight. So you've been able to evade those troubles. You've been able to get out of the hole. Now can you go a step further and sustain some time in your own offensive zone? For Illinois, it was an offensive challenge as well. They were a bit disconnected offensively. Again, only four shots for either team in that first period, and a lot of them from Illinois came from guys trying to take it through traffic in transition. They were surrounded a lot when that was the case. Guys trying to maneuver around three guys, successful a few times, but certainly unsustainable. So for Illinois, can you play more as a unit? And as discussed in the open, can you reestablish that down low presence right at the crease, whether it's in transition or in the set offense? Can you play more as a unit and can you create those scrums, those skirmishes, that chaos right in front of the net? that has really defined your success in the last month and a half. As we are set for period number two now, Philado and Bogdanoff, and one by the ladder, controlled by Illinois, trying to maneuver that one around. And now Illinois will reset in their own D zone. They're patient with it as they try to clear. Circling back around in his own trapezoid, Illinois waiting patiently as Billado right there on Zhuzhebetkov trying to take it away from him, goes around him now. That becomes a 50-50 puck battle. Can Illinois bail out Zhuzhebetkov? No, they cannot. Quick shot in, turned aside by Missouri. And now Illinois able to clear as Parks Wallace takes it. Alabama looking to make quick work here in the neutral zone. Fed in now towards the trapezoid. Zhuzhebetkov right there for Illinois. And again, Illinois able to get it to the neutral zone, but nothing much they can do from that point. Zhuzhebetkov back there is an abbreviated line change for the Illini, and that one sent to the near side. Now long pass in the neutral zone, receives it, but unable to get around Louis Decola. Now Illinois' turn to clear and not give their opponent anything, and Alabama will run after that. Decola with McDonald on a six. Illinois am forcing a four check here. It's Marassi and McDonald. We've seen that tandem employ some pressure before, but Alabama able to get it out. Trying to move around a few men there is Evan Brown. He's forced to the outside, another one on three. Another thing that Tide fans are unfortunately all too familiar with. Now in the trapezoid, able to go around one man, not able to go around the other. Pesky play with the stick there for Matt Veeve, and he's able to take that away. Feeds it over to Verossi. Can Verossi split the defense? No, he cannot. Great play right there by Louis DiPola. I see he gets hammered into the boards, and that might draw a penalty. Yes, it will. Matt Vive with a beautiful play to get out of trouble. Verossi tries to split the defense and a nice play from Louis DeCola to get in front of him, but DeCola ends up running into the boards head first on the far side corner. So into the box for Illinois, Anthony Verossi. A minute and 45 seconds into the second period. Much how the first period started for Alabama, the second period will as well, and the Tide will be back on the power play. So. Now's a golden opportunity to get that set offensive pressure. Top line on, the captain, Greg Simmons, set to take the face off. And he wins it. That one caroms towards the near side corner. Alpi tries to take it away, and Alpi turns that face off loss into a possession win. Still trying to clear it, and he will. Makes Parks Wallace take the long way as he runs after that one on the near side. Aiden Taylor and Bogdanoff right there for Illinois. Now Alabama looks to get it out. Sent across a few men there, taken away as that one was slowed down by Bogdanoff. Now Alpi in the right place at the right time as he fires. Save made and great placement right there by Wallace to deny a second chance. Sent across to Jensen Lopez, now near side. Goes around a man, gets help from Fink before he gets barreled by Bogdanoff. Bogdanoff trying to run after that. He gets shoulder checked by a red sweater and the Tide able to control it. Good hit there by Jensen Lopez to save the possession as now Simmons trying to maneuver around the trapezoid. Beats it back to the near side for Wallace. Waits patiently, fires. Full body block right there from Bogdanoff. And a beauty. We've seen Illinois make that play so many times 
here in this season. Halfway through the early power play in the second period. Firing one Billado, still alive in the slot and cleared by Nathan Dash. Both teams have had rebound takeaways here, not letting the other team get any second chances. One Illinois where they were able to do it just now and then one for Alabama when Illinois was able to apply some pressure shorthanded. Circling back, trying to avoid a man and passes it to the far side. A few more men collide right there and that will give Illinois the possession. Zuzhebetkov flings one out of harm's way. Now a chase down for it and getting involved there is Hughes. Now trying to run after that one, Mansfield. Right there is Matthew McDonald before Mansfield sends that one. Too hot to handle there for Jensen Lopez. Icing waved off as we're still on the power play here. Alabama able to control before that centering pass is sent right to a black sweater. Out of the box now comes Verasi, and that force Hughes out of the blue paint. Alabama will control. Louis DeCola with a man on a six. Has to move quickly now and avoids the pressure of Matthew McDonald. DeCola still alive as that one went around the trapezoid. And Missouri gets some help from his teammates. That one picked off before unable to handle it himself is Parker King. That will temporarily give Illinois the puck. Matt Veev over to Zuzhebet Cobb. Those two play catch on the near side. Matt Veev gets out of trouble, sends it to the far side. Has a lane, fires, save made, and a penalty coming again. The call appears to be a cross check. And just after Illinois got out of harm's way, it appears they will have a chance to go on the power play. Louis DeCola in the box for Alabama. Again, it's a cross check. And this second period starting exactly how the first period has in multiple ways. An Illinois penalty shortly follows off of the Alabama power play. Illinois will be on the power play for the next minute and 48. Top line now, led by Helfer and Bogdanoff, rushing on the near side is the latter, the Illinois captain. Feeds it back to Matt Veeve, goes around, one man gets out of trouble in the slot and now across to Nick Anderson. Anderson has to reset, odd angle there as his back was turned towards the net, able to get close, now feed it back to the point. Helfer, Matt Veeve, thought about it, trying to get it to the man in the middle, tried to find another man there, was Bogdanoff, he could not. Good defense there by Alabama as Nick Anderson sends Ralph Mundy into the boards off his feet. Beautiful hit right there. Matt Veeve still with it. Too hot to handle for Bogdanoff. Now another chase down. That one manages to get close and right to a black sweater. Illinois controls a minute 10 left on the power play here. They look to get some more shots off in the set offensive pressure. Matt Veeve near side, thought about it. Now we'll send it to his left. We'll play catch with Helfer. Now fires one in and deflected in front by Mundy into the netting. That's one Ralph Mundy will feel in the morning. That hit on the far side in the corner right there from Nick Anderson. First on the Alabama power play, Illinois was able to muddy things up and, and kill time by providing some resistance in the neutral zone and they got some shorthanded chances. Now on their own power play, they've been in complete control. Now Alabama with their first clear, it's Parker King right there who will fling that one on goal. And in th that case too for the Alabama power play and then the Illinois power play, again we talk about some similarities in this game, that's exactly how the first period started too. David Ettingen now in the place where Matt Vive was on the near side, now over to Nathan Dash at the point. Dash plays catch with a man, that's Verasi. Dash feeds it far side. Trying for a little three-man weave there, but Wallace in the way, and Alabama able to clear that. So now the tide starting to develop some more of a penalty kill. Again, Illinois was in control, but the tide were able to still advance on that penalty kill and deny Illinois second chances. Barassi tries to go around at one man, backhand wide. Now can Illinois reset? Five seconds left. 
on the power play now. Back to Verossi in the near side corner. Back to Dash at the point. Dash fires. Save made off the pad of Hughes. Out of the box comes the Cola. Back to five on five. Verossi looks to apply some more pressure. Backhand is met with some sticks. Too much traffic in the way there. And again, Alabama has been able to deny Illinois the ability to crowd the crease on offense. And they've done it as a takeaway here, now trying to make something happen, is Max Sextro, but he has it pickpocketed. Conversely, Illinois sends it back. That one goes through multiple men. Now Patrick McDonough with Decola on his six. Again, that pass goes through multiple players. Illinois able to control, albeit a bit disgruntled here, as now McDonough harassed by Sextro again, taken away by Alabama, a two on three now. Bilodeau forced to his right, fires, save made by Missouri and directed back around. Now Illinois looking to do the same. Near side, a fight for it. Simmons right there for Alabama. Taylor there for Illinois as a man goes down. That's Decola there as well. Fed right in front, still alive in the crease as Taylor's shot was deflected and cleared. Now Alabama undermanned, but they score! An improbable feed from the near side half wall, and Simmons picks it up very quickly, and the tie get a goal. That one came out of nowhere. As that produced what looked to be a one on three, one on four, 50-50 puck battle on the near side, a feed just to get it out of that half wall on the near side. And Simmons came in like a flash and was just able to send that top shelf with the hand eye as well as Ben Mazurik has played for Illinois over the last month and change. That's one of the hardest to defend for any netminder. So Alabama strikes first, riding the momentum off of a penalty kill. And now they have all the energy as taking that one away, Parks Wallace in front of his own bench. They're looking to be more physical here as well, fresh off of that. Illinois sends it through. That's David Ettingen. Let's see how quick Illinois can get some pressure on and on Hughes. David Ettingen right there as the Illini look to control. Still being fought for. Another puck battle at the half wall. Zhuzhebetkov joins the fray for Illinois. Sent back around to the corner there where it's Mundy and Ettingen. Those two bodies cancel each other out in the trapezoid, trying to hold on to it. Those two still going after it before it's sent around and it will be taken by Mansfield. Plays the ricochet game. That one off the skate of the linesman and it briefly gives Illinois the possession. Back around now to Zhuzhebetkov who fires one and deflected wide. McCarthy tried for a deflection and said it went wide. Illinois looks to keep the possession alive now. Zhuzhebetkov running after that one. Mansfield on his six. He sends the former into his, the boards. Now Will Coxon trying to get it out for the tie. Deflected off the skate of Atticus Helfer. Bogdanov trying to control now on the far side. Gets it out to Verasi, trying to clear it. Beautiful place here by Calvin Mansfield on multiple sides of the ice to either take possessions away or to keep possessions alive. Now that one goes off the stick of Verasi. Will Coxon beats him to it. Plays the ricochet game now, looking for a carom at the half wall in the Alabama zone. That one will force Hughes to get active with the stick. Alabama looking for a clear now. Illinois is keeping it in. Although nothing much they can do, but they'll have another chance now. A penalty coming against Alabama. That was for a hit on the blue line near the Illinois bench. And into the box, it appears that's Michael Kramer, the Huntsville native. So again, Alabama finding their groove, playing with a lot of energy here, coming off of a beautiful penalty kill. Now they'll have to do it again. Again, Alabama, for the most part in this game, has been able to deny Illinois from their rebound chances and mudding things up, creating chaos in the crease. They've really been able to do it by sending two of their own men right in front to either side of Joseph Hughes. Multiple times in this game when Illinois fired one, two red sweaters had been right there in the crease to deny rebounds and clear them. And so that's really how they've been able to, just as Iowa State was able to last weekend, 
deny Illinois of one of their most potent strengths over the last few weeks. Again, though, they got the momentum off of that penalty kill. Again, they haven't had a lot of success on the penalty kill since the calendar flipped to 2024, so a huge sight to see for the Tide in that regard. They ride the momentum of the penalty kill somehow off of a feed that was sent with a prayer. Greg Simmons was able to answer it right in front of the net. And that was Alabama has the full momentum. Illinois looks to grab it back. Can the Tide kill it again? And can they keep the momentum in their hands? Atticus Elford playing catch with Bogdan off as Illinois' periphery players are getting in closer to the high slot. Matt Veeve in front, denied point blank. Rebound chance, still alive in the crease, pulled up, still in the slot, and a goal! A score! Second chance, third chance, how about a fourth chance? And Nick Anderson in his first game back from injury ties it for Illinois. Alabama wasn't able to deny them that time from that signature chaos creation right in front. It started with Alexander Matviev going around a few men, able to apply a point blank chance in on Hughes and that forced him away from the net. Some more beautiful saves from him, however, pulled that all the way out towards the high slot and Illinois had a wide open chance after that. Yet to see who the goal has been credited to. Illinois able to tie it just a few minutes after the tied strike first. And that is a huge step in the right direction for Illinois going back. As that one right in front, now Dorian trying to do the same thing. He's checked back and forth by Louis DeCola. And Nick Anderson right there. Again, he has been credited with the goal for Illinois. That V fires, alive in front again. Dorian tries to backhand it through. And that one deflected. A huge hit right there. Shoulder to shoulder on Louis DeCola. And he is still down. Pleasantries exchanged following that once again. As that was a shoulder check, shoulder to shoulder on Louis DeCola, and he is still struggling to rise. Now he does. And it's the goal scorer for Illinois, Nick Anderson in the box. So now the momentum starting to ping pong back and forth. Now it's Alabama back on the power play. Or rather, hold on, they only skate out four. Hold everything. It appears this will continue to be a four on four. As into the box for Alabama, or rather still there from the previous power play, that appears to be Michael Kramer. He's still there. Again, no official wording as to why, but that's the second time that that has happened today. Two men go in the box for Bama, and four skaters out for Alabama as an Illinois player loses a glove. They're going to pick it up there is Matt Vee. The Tide trying to control. Helfer sends a man down and able to pick off the puck. So for the next 20 seconds, we will have four on four. That one gets past Verasi and cleared by the Tide. Again, unclear as to why. That's the second time that's happened today. As now Illinois on the four on four. Looks to fire one in, and he scores! from the exact same spot. And it looks like Illinois has found a little bit of a weakness on Joe Hughes, and that is 
Send him top shelf from a high slot. That's Anthony Verassi with his sixth of the season. And that one coming from the transition play of Illinois. Again, they turned to the speed right there in the four on four, and they played a little bit more as a unit with a short pass to Verassi as he was able to gain the zone. Alabama still with four on the ice and make that five now is coming out of the box is Kramer. So power play here for Alabama for the next 50 seconds. And now Illinois able to clear. Again, once we receive word on why that was, that two penalties called on Alabama, only one in the box, second time that's happened today, as soon as we receive word as to why that is, we will let you know for sure as Illinois continues to kill time here on the clear inside of 30 seconds now on the minor penalty for the hit from Nick Anderson. And Illinois continuing to deny the Tide the ability to get set. They are content just to pass it around in their own D zone before they clear it. Now it's Alabama's turn to try and play as a unit so they can really salvage something here out of this power play. That one fed all the way along on goal. Now running after that one, Luke Alpe. And the whistle blown, one second left on the clock before Nick Anderson is a free man. So seven and a half minutes left here in this second period. Very interesting sequence right there. Goal from Alabama. Illinois goes on the power play. Alabama forced to kill another one. They can't as Illinois returns back to their chaos creating ways right in front of the net. Then Nick Anderson with a huge physical hit on Louis DeCola that draws a penalty. And now Illinois able to kill off that as Atticus Helfer gains the puck. But in all that time is coming right out of that off the bench, David Ettingen, a save made. Coming off of all of that, it was still a four on four even after the Illinois power play goal. So a very interesting sequence there filled with multiple penalties, multiple hits, multiple shots. And again, we have the reason we will send it your way. That's the second time that's happened tonight where a penalty has been called and it hasn't led to a man in the box. Barassi returns the favor and scores again! of the goals in this period for Illinois. Again, our top shelf in on Joe Hughes. So now Alabama back in familiar territory. You have to stop the bleeding. Illinois has opened the floodgates here with three goals in the last three minutes. Now Moapaw fires and an easy one there for Missouri to handle. Three goals in the past three minutes for Illinois. One from Nick Anderson on the power play and two from Anthony Verassi. And again, a player in Verassi that is very streaky, very quick. We have seen him take on a little bit of a four check role as players have been injured throughout this season. The quickness this time being applied when his team has the puck on the other side. And that time he was able to cash in off of a shot that was redirected and made contact with the wall in the trapezoid. Now Illinois moving quickly, trying to push things the other way. Kept to the outside there as Ettingen, Bogdanoff joins in the fray. Right there, Wilcoxon as that one gets close and into the netting. Seven minutes left here in this second period. Again, if you're just joining us, all four goals scored in this one coming in that time. At the 12 minute mark for Alabama, it was the captain, Greg Simmons, with his ninth on the season. And since then, Illinois has scored three goals, all top shelf on Hughes. Alpi fires again, trying to elevate the puck, but right into the bread basket. So 
now Illinois looks to solidify their hold on the pace of this game. And we haven't really seen a lot of heavy physical play from Alabama in this second period. Again, credit to Illinois for that factor in speeding up the game, but also applying hits in short range when you've had to. Near side now, Wilcoxon forced to retreat as Illinois had it and fed it in. Running after that, Bailey McCarthy, Mundy right there as well for the Tide. Mundy and McCarthy make contact. David Etkin right there as well. McCarthy trying to get it out. Another man helps. That one fired wide off the stick of David Etkin. Near side now, Alfie. Sidewinder there, does not go. That from Emma Joy. Illinois able to keep it in. Alabama looking for a clear. It's back to the point now. I'll be able to pick that one off before it goes off a stick now. Harrison makes the smart defensive play, but Illinois able to take that away. That could have been an odd man rush for the tie. Now it becomes a rush for the Illini. Taylor Ettingen and a save made. Again, into the bread basket of Hughes. Six minutes left in period number two. So if you're Alabama now, what can you do to regain the momentum? You, you muddied up the game in the first period with a lot of 50-50 puck battles, and you, you showed off your placement in the neutral zone in the first period, really, to deny Illinois. Now Illinois has put you back in familiar territory with the inability to really not just clear the puck, but make anything happen once you do. Right on cue, however, they do manage to produce an odd man rush, and that one into the netting. Broadcaster's jinx, perhaps, only God knows. And just as Illinois was able to convert transition hockey into set offensive pressure, maybe Alabama is trying to do the same thing here. They will have an ozone face off to the right of Missouri. That one's still around the dot, kept in off the faceoff. And a quick shot there that is saved. That one off the stick of Wallace. So now Parker King and Sasha Matveev will go back at it. King wins it again, able to navigate that through traffic right there as Nate Byron before that shot is sent wide. Now Wallace vying for that one at the half wall on the near side. That one pulled out, odd angle there, and the shot goes wide. Now having to chase after that one to keep it in, he does, is Austin Fink. Back towards that point, Karam's back to a red sweater, able to get it around, a man there is Byron. Tried to find a man right in front there, could not. That allows Illinois to clear it, and now Alabama has to reset. They will not, as Byron and Helfer collide off of that offside. Five minutes, 13 seconds remaining in period number two. And Illinois with all the momentum, but really over the last minute, call it minute and a half, Alabama has tried to take some of that back with some few rushes, a few rushes across the ice and a few face-off wins that have for the time being kept things in the offensive zone. We've also seen great navigation of the puck from the point towards the slot over that last minute and change from the tide, particularly Nate Byron right there. And so now Illinois looking to clear to deny the Tide from the ability to do that. Barassi forced to circle back at the half wall and feeds it back to the point. Matt Deeve goes wide. Alpi back with it. Inside of five minutes now in the second period, Illinois looks to apply more pressure as the shot from Alpi goes too high. Matt Deeve there as well. Tried to go around a man, could not. Al Alabama able to clear. Now Dorian. Jensen Lopez on his six. Still there. Gives him a little shove. Dorian able to control in the corner and fling it to safety. Now Illinois will slow things down. Very deliberate here. And the puck handling, credit to Illinois, the puck handling has been there today. We talked about the impact that that would have as heading to the bench, holding on to his right elbow is Joe Dorian. We talked about the impact that the puck handling will have in terms of keeping Alabama frustrated. As some more collisions in front of the Alabama bench and tussling right there. As Illinois still trying to get it out of their own defensive zone, now they are able. And that one will rumble all the way across. 
Now to the near side, Simmons tries to cut it off. McDonald beats him right there. Now David Ettingen in the middle of everything along with Matustic. Those two collide, Illinois able to get it out, although that centering pass goes through everybody and they'll have to reset. Three and a half minutes left here in this second period. Active with the stick again is Hughes, but feeds it right to Alec Bogdanoff off the redirect. Now Bogdanoff with one he'll want to have back and Nathan Dash has to retrace his steps. Three minutes left here in this second period. Again, Illinois with three unanswered goals roughly in the span of three minutes to take a two goal lead on the Crimson Tide. Now David Ettingen forced to his right there by Louis DeCola, 24 against 24. Ettingen across to Bogdanoff. That one went wide. Now taking it out is Ben Wilcoxon. Poke check there, but Alabama still able to hold on to the puck. Bilodeau, odd angle, stick check there from Nathan Dash, denies that shot. Now Zuzhebetkov harassed from behind. Illinois will be patient again in clearing as we've hit the two and a half minute mark. That's Dash and Zuzhebetkov, yet another defensive pairing for Illinois. It's been a little bit of musical chairs in the last three games on defense for Illinois, even with a lot of their D-men having come back from injury, still the case as they try to keep it in here. Meeting a man to it there is Evan Brown. Illinois able to keep it in off the poke there from Zuzhebetkov. Sent to the far side now, Atticus Helfer cuts a man off to get it. Illinois making quick work here, making good work that is, although Zuzhebetkov unable to keep it in and he'll get whistled for it. Illinois right there, able to make good work of Alabama's attempts to clear the offensive puck there. And two, credit to Illinois. Again, we talked about it coming into this game. Last Friday against Iowa State and the task to improve the Friday-Saturday games. And the only litmus test that was not there on that Friday game for Illinois was the puck handling. Tonight, it is. We have not seen a lot of misplays for Illinois in this game. And again, we talked about it. Alabama, a weakness is they've been forced into a lot of one-on-threes, and again, they spent a lot of long periods in their own D zone, so Illinois' puck handling, they had to come in tonight with that on point and accurate, and it has been, and they've frustrated Alabama here in this second period doing that. A minute 33 left on the ticker before both teams will head back downstairs. Again, you retrace the steps of that Friday-Saturday conundrum for Illinois, a team that looked com completely different one day to another. And, you know, once they had what looked to be a day to shed some rust, they played very well on Saturday on game two of these series as opposed to game one. You go back to that win against Purdue Northwest three weeks ago where it looked like a Saturday game on a Friday. And then as Verasi picks that off, Beautiful feed in front, but the shot goes wide for McDonald. Rebound chance, and the net dislodged. You move to the next week against McKendry, and they looked all out of sorts. It looked the complete opposite of the week prior against Purdue Northwest. So you wondered coming in last week, make that week three out of four against, against Iowa State, you wondered, was the Purdue Northwest game a fluke? Is this truly a struggle that this team will have to defend against? the Friday troubles and being unable to play a clean game. They made baby steps, they really improved on Friday in knocking off two of those three litmus tests and they have been able to finish the job so far in this Friday game, week four, against the Tide by being able to fulfill that third litmus test which has been clean play and handling of the puck. A minute, 10 seconds now as they slow things down in their own ozone. Two men trade places on the far side. Now a little three-man weave there in front of the Illinois bench. Pat Vive deflected and too high. Now running after that one is David Ettingen. Inside of a minute now as a feed from Dash. Tried to get a give and go right there. That one's still alive, but taken by Alabama. They look to clear, two on two here. Unable to get around a man right there was Calvin Mansfield. Illinois trying to control here. Now the tide able to do that and the shot turned aside. Alabama now trying to Employ some offensive pressure here with 35 seconds as another hit. Illinois has taken the crown from them of the more physical team here in this second period. There's now 20 seconds left. Illinois looking for a last gasp in period number two. 
Matt Vive moves to his left, fires wide. Rebound chance right in front. Hughes turned that aside and his eyes were turned to the puck. His back was facing the puck. Incredible save. As Zuzhebetkov fires wide, that hits the back of the netting and that will round out period number two. What a save there from Joe Hughes. Quick shot on the near side from Matt Vive. Redirect and his back was facing the puck. Great save from him. Despite that though, really two goals out of the three scored by Illinois in this period that he's gonna wanna have back. All three of the Illini's goals have been top shelf and on the Alabama net minor. And two of those three have been with a clear view. One on zero, point blank chances. So certainly something he's going to wanna to have back. And credit to the Tide, they were able to for the most part, keep Illinois from getting a lot of rebound pressure in front, save for really one or two chances after Illinois was able to score three goals. And the Tide were as well able to apply some pressure of their own in the form of some transition hockey. So turned a little bit in the favor of Alabama after Illinois was able to score those three goals. But really it's mile two of the 26 mile marathon if you were to compare it for Alabama in terms of what they have to do to get back in this game. And two, Illinois is up two goals. They have a chance to avenge the Tide do. That three goal lead they gave up in their last game against Oklahoma. Illinois looks to keep it. They look to control the momentum. They look to continue out physically one of the most physical teams in the ACHA as they did in period number two. We'll be back for the third period. Three goals in three minutes for the Illini have put them in front.
final frame is here in a second period in which four goals were scored. Alabama started it with Greg Simmons and then three goals in the span of three minutes shortly thereafter from Illinois to make this a two goal lead. And for the Tide, you have the chance to avenge some demons from your last game. Again, if you remember, you were up four to one on the Oklahoma Sooners before giving up that three goal lead in period number three. So you have the, you have the chance to avenge that in similar fashion in two, in the same way that the second period was for Illinois about returning to their strengths in the case of getting shots off very close to the net in the slot and creating a lot of chaos right in front of Joseph Hughes. Now you have the chance for the Tide to return to your physical ways and return to your strength, that being that physicality. Illinois was the more physical team, certainly, in the second period. It showed in multiple areas as well as the speed made a difference and you weren't really able to clog things up and create a lot of 50-50 puck battles as right off of that, that shot goes wide on the far side. Back to the corner now. 50-50 puck battle right there is Fink for the Tide. Still being fought for around there. Pulled out by David Ettingen. Gets it back to Helfer. A lot of traffic in front. Helfer's shot goes wide. Back over to Zuzhebetkov. Again, great placement from Illinois throughout this entire game. They're picking pucks up very quickly. Right off of shots. However, this time around, Alabama is managing to muddy it up. Zuzhebetkov gets it out, although that delayed. Illinois able to pick it up right away once again. As Helfer feeds that one around, back to the far side now. Zuzhebetkov has to get set. Trying to go around Simmons. Sick check there from Simmons, but Zuzhebetkov feeds it to the trapezoid. Picked off by a red sweater and cleared. So again, Alabama has been able to slow down the game with a lot of 50-50 puck battles, but the placement of Illinois has continued to rain when they have had set pressure in their own offensive zone. Near side now, trying to get it out. It's back into neutral ice. Now Illinois has to flip that in and tag up. That gives Ralph Mundy a chance to circle back. And Alabama looks to get reset. Back to the neutral zone, however. They do get it out, but nothing much they can do, as now Joe Dorian on the near side looks to get right back on the attack for Illinois. His stick breaks in half off of that shot. It gets close to the crease, although Barassi unable to make anything happen there. McDonald lays the boom, and back to neutral ice. Now rushing with a burst of speed, unable to handle that one Mansfield, and that will deny that odd man rush. Now right off the bat, Mansfield trying to keep contact with it again, although Verassi in the right place at the right time. Illinois with the possession in their own trapezoid. Two minutes into this third period. Al be content to kill as much time as he would like. Now on the near side rushing and feeding that one in, looking for a carom. That was Matthew McDonald. Tied again, able to clear. Illinois trying to go right back on the attack right away. Matt V body checked right there by Mundy to deny that. Tied are getting it in the neutral zone, but again, nothing much they can do once that happens. Familiar story for Alabama, although one they were able to deny in the first period. As Matt V trying to corral that, has to do it again. Plays catch with Helfer, pass across to Nathan Dash. Looking for a lane, fires one, save made, turned aside by Hughes. Back towards the half wall, poke checked away there, and now cleared by Greg Simmons. Helfer fighting for it, he gets taken down, and that will draw a penalty. It looked like Helfer's midsection was the point of attack for Alabama as he almost rotated there in going down onto the ice. So into the box for the Tide is Jensen Lopez. And now Illinois with a chance to go right back on the power play. Again, if you're Alabama, you made significant strides coming out of those three goals in the second period. You know, some good changes, but some good adjustments, but still a long way to go. And now Illinois back on the power play certainly does not help. Bama was strong on the penalty kill in the first period, faltered a little bit in the second as the Illini have started to find their footing. And now can Illinois put the finishing touch on the power play in this game with another goal to make it a 4-1 lead. Again, the power play struggled in the first period. They were able to bring it back in the second. Now Alabama applying some pressure and forcing Illinois to retreat. 
Nate Byron, the main man right there, denying that. Now Joe Dorian circling around. Dorian harassed from behind right there by Ryan Matustic. Back towards the point, Illinois controls. And now the clear will force Atticus Helfer to charge after that. Matt Vive and now Anderson. Anderson near side, tried to feed it to a man, tries to get it to Helfer. Ricochet goes awry and that gives Alabama the puck. Bilodeau moving quickly, a one-on-one, -on -one, fires one just wide. Trying to keep it in now. On the far side is Max Sextro. Off of a few more deflections, Illinois back with it. Halfway through on this minor penalty to Lopez. Line change for Illinois. And Zhuzhevetkov again content to kill a bit more time as he looks to clear. A pass across both seams. Illinois will go back with it. Able to get around a man right there is Varasi. Varasi trying to get around another. Still able to hold on to it, although an odd angle. Has to circle back for it towards the far side corner. Trying to get it out of harm's way. He does back to the point. Swung around. Zhuzhevetkov thought about it. Fires full body block right there from Alabama. Right there was Sextro to deny that. And he pokes it away, forcing Zhuzhevetkov and Illinois to retreat. Back to the far side now, as we're inside 20 seconds on the power play. 15.25 left here in this third period as Illinois looks to reset. Heavily shading that corner as now they will spread out, getting it back to the point, firing one, still alive in front in the slot and taken away by Alabama. Nobody there for Illinois to apply pressure on that side of the net and Alabama will kill off the rest of the penalty. Now taking it away, Bailey McCarthy sending it across. Illinois with a lot of ice to work with right now on the near side. Verassi fires, glove save from Hughes. And again, Anthony Verassi is on hat-trick watch right now. Two goals, the second and third in this game for Illinois. And in turn, his seventh and eighth on the season. to the right of Hughes, Aiden Taylor, and Max Eckstein. Eckstein has been relatively quiet for Alabama in this game, despite being a very potent second line piece and a very reliable piece. Illinois has been able to keep him at bay for the most part now. Five minutes having gone by here in this third period, Illinois continuing to make quick work in the neutral zone and utilizing some areas over the last minute and change where there's been a lot of open ice. They look to do the same now as it's back on the periphery, trying to keep that one in. Luke Alpi can pass the dive of Kramer. Looking for a centering pass. That one goes right through a black sweater and forces Illinois to retreat. Zhuzhebetkov goes around one man, gains the zone. Forced to the outside, though, that's a one on three. He'll kill time, waiting for his line mates to join him. Playing the ricochet game there now as Emmett Joy tries to corral it, beating him to it, Kramer. 50-50 puck battle now in the far side corner, taken away by Illinois. Pass behind, that appeared to be Joy. That would have been a beautiful pass right in front and a beautiful chance for Illinois if that one was sent close enough on Joy. Instead, it went behind him, and now Illinois has to reset as a huge hit, but still able to hold on to the puck. Another pass behind a man, and now Helfer feeds it in. He scores! Helfer salvages it. He regains his footing. And then he goes top shelf, quarter pocket on Hughes. And again, all four of Illinois' goals have been top shelf on Joseph Hughes. and I have found a weakness and they have rushed to exploit it. So now it is a four to one score. And again, Alabama, you were exactly in Illinois' place last week. So that's all the motivation you need if you wanna come back and make this game interesting. But for now, Illinois has what appears to be a stranglehold up four to one off of the goal from Atticus Helfer.
Missouri active with the stick. Dangerous territory there, although Dash able to bail him out. McDonald near side looks to clear. Kept in for the meantime by Fink, but right back to a black sweater. Illinois able to clear. Face off one by the tide. Fink pulls it to the far side. Picked off there by Illinois in neutral ice, although gloving it down there and making something happen is Wallace. Two on one game denied by the stick of Anderson, although a shot to the head there on McDonald and he's still down as that one got in close on then Missouri. Mansfield now on the near side. Alabama looking to get in closer now. Look for the redirect there off the shot from Molipaw. Nothing doing there. Able to keep it in Fink. Wallace redirects. Alabama playing a lot quicker here though, but Matt Vive able to deny that. Still able to keep it in, however, off the poke check from Matt Vive. And fourth time's the charm for Illinois on the clear. Alabama's turn to make quick work in the neutral zone. They chip it in. Fink looking for a burst of speed right there, although beating him to it, Nick Anderson. Now at the half wall, Illinois looks to do the same thing and clear it. 50-50 puck battle now. Anderson will take it to the corner. And now Nathan Dash with a lane and a save. Man, that appeared to go off the helmet of Hughes. Anything goes, I guess, with Illinois' propensity to fire them to the top and score in this game. Nate Byron now, that one gets close and Missouri will glove that pop fly out of the air. Eight minutes having gone by here in this third period. Illinois has tacked on one more off the stick of Atticus Helfer. Again, for this Alabama team, a lot has happened since you played Illinois at your place the last time. They're in the midst of a 10-game losing streak and their last win at home against the Illini. Save made there by Missouri. Ettingen at the right place off of that carom to clear it. Alabama trying to make quick work in the neutral zone again, but Ettingen will deny them. He'll try to do more than that now as he gains the zone and goes around one man, but forced to an odd angle now in the corner. Another puck battle for it. Illinois undermanned in that specific one, but they're still able to make work of it until it gets to the point and the tide clear. Far side now, trying to go through a few men there is Parker King, that one goes wide. Now back to the corner on the other side, Illinois looking to clear again. Another battle for it, two on one, pulled out by Matustic. He gets denied and a big hit there from Joe Dorian as Bogdanoff takes it on the other end. Bogdanoff feeds it around. That's David Ettingen. That one gets close. Illinois looking for a stick. They can't get one as that one caromed into the high slot. Back around now trying to make contact with it is Bilodeau. Still alive in the Illinois zone, but taken. Three on one by Zuzhebetkov as a player with a stick down and he recollects. Now on the other side, a chase down and an icing called. Nine minutes into period number three. And you, and you go back to that series in Pelham where Alabama was the home team in October, the end of October. And that Friday game, the Tide won three to one. It, it looked like, you know, former head coach Phil Tesoriero called it a turning point. And well, it has, just not in the way they've won it. And Saturday, that Saturday game, the first loss of this current 10 game losing streak for the Tide, it was a 19-round shootout that gave Illinois the win on the Tide's home ice. And again, since that series between these two teams, the Tide have not won since. It's been almost four months since their last win and almost 13 months since their last win on the road. As now holding on to that one and feeding it in, Zuzhebetkov, McLean trying to beat a man to it, but Mundy denies him. Now in the corner. And a few more bodies collide in the open ice as Patrick McDonough will get his mitt on it. Taylor off the ricochet, taken away now by Wilcoxon. And Zuzhebetkov has to course correct there as a line change for both teams. Halfway down here in the third period, Illinois still up by three. 
Now McDonough will do the same in the open ice. Will Coxon beats him to it again. Matt Vive able to pick off that pass. But now he gets restrained in the corner and that allows Alabama to clear. And that will stop that around the blue line. So again for the Tide, long way to go as you march towards your first win in almost four months. And the first win for interim head coaches, Michael Fairbanks and Ian Haber. That one, that faceoff pulls all the way to the Illinois zone on the near side. Dorian ricochets, that goes right to a red sweater. Fink unable to make anything happen with it now as that one sent to the far side. Illinois chips it in, now running after that one is Connor Lawson. Lawson turning around, has it, and looks to get it to safety. Back all the way to the point, feeds it across. Good feed there through the legs of one to Joe Dorian. He fires and save again from Hughes. Now you start to get into the time of possession battle for Illinois and keep things on your own side of the ice. And We've seen them make quick work in the neutral zone here. That has been almost one of the battles within the battle of this game. Certainly, which team has been the more physical team? Which team has been able to return to their roots for Illinois? It was about sending bodies in front and getting rebound chances for Alabama. It has been the physicality, which Illinois has been able to beat them at for the most part since the start of the second period. And another battle as well, who can go on the attack again the quickest? whether it's in the neutral zone or gathering the puck off of a missed shot in your own O zone. Here it's Alabama gathering the puck now. Shot, a lot of deflections, they get one, but it goes too high as Dorian and Lopez tussle back and forth. Nine minutes left here in the third period. Offensive zone faceoff for the tie. Stein and Matt Beef. And into the slot, Illinois will take that one as it now goes into the corner. Patient clear for the Tide here, and now they turn on the Jets, although that's too hot for Lopez to handle. Dash tries to force him off the puck unsuccessfully. Those two are still going out in the corner. Now near the half wall, and Dash gets the last lap. Short pass over to the far side. Killing time there before feeding it into Matt Vive, although Matt Vive's relegated back to that corner now. Harassed from behind. He is all over him right there. That appears to be Max Eckstein in on Alexander Matt Vive. A few more bodies cancel each other out before able to gain position there is Emmett Joy. That one goes off of a black sweater before it appears to be fed into the Illinois bench. Eight minutes left in the third period. Now for Alabama, how can you mount to come back here? Illinois made quick work in the neutral zone and kept things in their O zone. So how do you deny the Illini? How do you slow them down? In the first period, it was a lot of the 50-50 puck battles and the physicality. And the Tide looking for maybe that as a means to reimpose their will on this game. And icing will send things back into their own defensive zone. And for Illinois, again, plaudits all the way around to how they have played tonight. They've kept one of the most physical teams in the ACHA in check by giving them a piece of their own medicine. And again, the three litmus tests that have really defined their season and that in the past have separated the Friday games from the Saturday games, two they were able to conquer last week, that being the physicality and the speed. And the third one, the puck handling, they have been able to conquer tonight. As the Tide looking to make a run, save made right there, Emma Joy to deny that second chance in the low slot. Illinois looks to clear. Centering pass still being fought for. Tide able to keep it in. That's the Cola. Emmett Joy with a lot of playing time and making the most out of it. Active over this last minute and change as he sent a man into the boards. Now rushing the other way and Illinois will slow things down. Again, they're content to do that up three with seven and a half left in this game. Now Alabama looking to make quick work in return. Nicola slows it down before sends it to the far side. Byron has to circle back. 
fed it right on goal, but taken away by Illinois. McCarthy collides right in front there with Matustic, and Illinois will have take two at clearing the puck, and they succeed. Pulled out now towards the eyes. Zuzhebetkov circles back on the near side. Again, if you're Illinois, you're happy doing this for as long as you can. Three-man weave here, gives the puck to Bogdanov, now on the near side to Helfer. Aiden Taylor right there in the midst of it. One on two though, and the two win that battle. Brown tries to go around a man, great check right there. Alabama still trying to control it, now a chase down for it that gives the puck to Mansfield. Mansfield with a shot, able to make something out of nothing there, and Missouri denies that. So again, Illinois able to fulfill those three litmus tests finally on a Friday and to come out of the gate swinging. And should all things remain the same here in the next six minutes and 37 seconds, it will be an end to this five game losing streak. And again, for Illinois, it hasn't really felt like a losing streak because the way they played Friday against Purdue Northwest two weeks ago, and two, the way they played against an Iowa State team last weekend that was fighting for their playoff lives, marked improvements all the way around. And a 1-0 game Friday night and then a 2-1 game Saturday night. Really, with Illinois' only blemish being that they couldn't close out, that they couldn't keep it close, that is, in crunch time. That and Iowa State's ability to deny them in front. That one deflected there from McDonough. Beautiful placement here from Illinois. Again, we knew coming into this game that the placement and the puck handling had to be on point for Illinois with how much time Alabama has spent in their own D zone and how much time they had been forced into a lot of one on threes for much of this season. And Illinois has been able to show it not just on the offensive end of things, but on the defensive end as well. That placement, that poke checking ability, and the puck handling as well. John O'Pilka's gonna have to dig to find some really sloppy plays tonight for Illinois for the film room on Monday and Tuesday. It has been that clean of a game tonight for the Illini, and again, a huge improvement considering how this team has looked very different from Friday to Saturday in past weeks. Running after that one now is Frank Adante seeing some of his first ice time in this game. Now Nathan Dash there. Adante tries to poke it away and does. That one went off of a few men and now into the near side corner. We're getting close to the five minute mark. Illinois still up by three. Adante makes a beautiful feed right in front, centering pass to nobody there off the stick of Aiden Taylor. A few men cancel each other out now as Alabama is able to get it out of the D zone before Illinois feeds it in and proceeds to make a change. Illinois, too, has been able to limit Ralph Mundy tonight for the most part. Take away here from the stick of Mundy, Matt V fires wide. Still has it. Matt V still moving around on the far side. Trading places with a man before Zuzhebetkov fires. Still alive in the trapezoid as Verasi goes to pick that one off. Again, Verasi's on hat trick watch tonight for Illinois with two goals in the second period. He has it. He fires and stopped by Hughes. And limiting Ralph Mundy, one of the most reliable defensemen for this Alabama team for Illinois, that has been a little bit of a greater theme tonight for the Illini too. The top line has had their role in this game, particularly on the power play. What appeared to be a, almost a miraculous goal from Greg Simmons to start the scoring in the second period, the only source of scoring for Bama in this game. But outside of that, there hasn't been much production, particularly that second line. Illinois has been able to limit Max Eckstein and they've been able to limit Ralph Mundy on the second defensive line as well tonight. Helfer's shot deflected, although right to David Ettingen. His is blocked. Conversely, and Illinois will have take three. Helfer near side, sends it across. Now moving to his left, that appears to be Zuzhebetkov. He fires wide, had it deflected in front there by Michael Kramer. And again, 
really outside of Nate Byron for the Crimson Tide. The second line has totally been quiet tonight. Again, Mundy and Eckstein, two very reliable players. That's a tall task for Illinois to shut down, and they have done that tonight. As now inside of four minutes left as Helfer puts skates on one. Tried to do it again right there, although it's picked off by Kramer. Kramer fires a shot, save made, still alive in front. Missouri down, and now gets back up as he had some help right in front from Bailey McCarthy. Tide able to keep it in now. And now running after that one is Helfer. The aforementioned McCarthy now looks to clear at the near side point and does. It's the first real close chance in quite some time that Alabama has had in on Ben Mazurik. Only 17 shots, and most of them came in the second period for both teams. Mansfield across, Billado fires, turned aside. And the net appears to be dislodged with 2.58 left on the clock in this one. Again, Illinois will move to 11-14-1 and, and will snap a five-game losing skid. And not only does that have to feel good, but playing clean right out of the gate. Again, the Friday-Saturday conundrum to finally be able to overcome that has to feel huge. That's a huge monkey off the back for this Illinois team. As holding on to the possession is Evan Brown on the near side. Nicola sends that across. Back over to Mansfield, he fires. Still alive in the trapezoid, right in front. Another chance denied by Missouri. He had four or five men right in front of him in the span of about five feet, and he was still able to make contact with it and see it through. And a man collides right into him that appears to be Parks Wallace. Wallace is still on him. And Missouri rises to his feet. Last minute adjustment here in the last five minutes from the tie. They're really starting to crowd the crease and play the rebound game. It's a test of something that Illinois has done rather well at times over the last two, three weeks in denying rebound chances right in front. That's been Matt Vivan Dorian leading the charge. Joe Dorian was in the middle of that right there. And it was Ben Mazurik as well coming up with some great saves through traffic. Again, that's an expansion of his game that we've seen over the last month and change. Bailey McCarthy will go into the box here for Illinois for two minutes of the 2.23 left on the clock. So now Alabama maybe with a chance to practice that crease game and roll it over into tomorrow's matchup against these Illini. Centering pass comes out, shot still alive in front. That one still there before Zurich turns it aside with his left pad. An Illinois player is still down in the high slot and now rises to his feet. That's Alexander Matviv. As it appeared, he got hit in the midsection. And he will probably spend the rest of this game on the bench just as a precaution. minute 56 on the clock in regulation. Subtract 23 seconds for a late Alabama power play here. And so now Alabama maybe looks to do some experimenting here and find something offensively that will work against this Illinois team tomorrow. Full body block right there from that appeared to be Bogdanoff. Going in, looking for the touch pass there. Byron unable to make anything happen. There have been a few of those plays tonight for Alabama where a shot has been sent, rather a pass, as going in and into the netting. That one ends up there from Simmons. There have been a few instances tonight for the Tide where they have fired one from the near side point. And they've looked for a touch pass right to the right of Ben Mazurik, and they haven't been able to get one. So maybe something to fix for the tie tomorrow. Additionally, they're experimenting with sending a lot of players in front, and it does seem to have gotten them a little bit closer. Again, things they can roll over into tomorrow. 
But again, for the Tide, that's if you can manage to get set in your own offensive zone. And tonight for Illinois, as that one off the glove of Missouri and wide, Illinois has really been able to deny you, really for about 35 minutes in this game, the ability to get past their defense in the neutral zone. Save made again by Missouri now. Running after that one is Greg Simmons. Simmons again with the lone goal in this game for the Tide. Still alive in front. Right there trying to deny that one is Aiden Taylor. He pays the price for that. Pass across the ice there. Again, they looked for another one, couldn't get it. Really the only touch pass that has worked in this game for Alabama has been on that goal in the second period. Other than that, no dice for a team that seems to be relying a lot on it in the Tide as Missouri stops that. And another friendly exchange, this time between Zhuzhebetkov and Jensen Lopez. Those two still going at it. And the linesman will break it up. Those two are still chirping back and forth. Maybe Lopez trying to get under Zhuzhebetkov's skin. And those two will spend the last 40 and a half seconds of this game behind glass, probably still chirping in the process. And again, for a team in Alabama that, although they still look to play physical, they look to be more disciplined when opponents try and punch back. That is an area where they can still express some frustration after the fact and try and get under people's skin. The old Draymond Green chirp. And we've seen it a couple of times in this game as inside of 30 seconds now, we will go back to even strength as out of the box here for Illinois comes Bailey McCarthy. Point blank chance there denied. And again, Ben Mazurik continues to succeed even with four or five men directly in his line of view. Again, with Nolan Woodring injured for Illinois, he has had to play really the last 10 games for this team. And he's always had that keen eye ability, whether four or five guys directly in front of him or four or five guys from the slot, where he's expanded his game over that period of time has been on the stretch saves, moving from one side of the ice to the other as Varasi finishes the job and gets a hat trick. A night to remember for the Illinois freshman. Three goals and one to finish the job on the empty net. Marassi Again, was one of those players that broke this game open for Illinois in the second period after Nick Anderson was able to cash in on a fourth chance on a power play goal. Varasi scores the next two. One of them in transition and another one he gets into the right spot for a point blank chance. And both of his goals, top shelf in on Joe Hughes. Both of those goals in the second period that is. So, Barassi as that will round out the game with three goals tonight and a hat trick for the Illinois freshman. One of the top youngsters on this squad as the Illini break a five game losing skid and turn the Friday woes into Friday joy. Five to one, the final score. Again, Alabama didn't have a lot of chances in this game until late. And it was really one that almost miraculous in a way off of a laser feed from the near side half wall to the low slot where Greg Simmons was able to tip it in. Other than that, they didn't really get a lot. You can see them experimenting with getting bodies right in front late in the third period after this game was already decided. And surely that's something the coaches will talk about as they move into tomorrow's contest. Again, these two teams will battle again, same time, same location, tomorrow night. As Illinois nabs almost a long-awaited win, if you will, a slow march to consistency. They've been knocking on the door, and now they have it. So that will do it for us. Again, Illinois wins it 5-1. to one. 
No three goal lead blown here as they are able to snap the skid and get back in the win column tonight. For all of us in the broadcasting crew, this is George Corey saying so long until tomorrow night when these two squads will face off again. Final score for the final time, the Illini take it five to one over the visiting Alabama Crimson Tide.